Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Long Beach Joe, and I am back at it, back at it, back at it. Again. I'm back at it again, man. Listen, it is your boy, okay? And boy, oh boy, do we have quite a bit to talk about today, right? Jets, Patriots coming up. Man, they're 0-2. We're 1-1. We're trying to get back, okay, on the road to W's around here. And we're trying to get the momentum back. We're trying to get rolling, get things, you know, moving and shaking around here, coming off of a bad loss to the Cowboys. That's in the past. Now we have to prepare for the Patriots, who we have not beaten since 2015. Wow. We're going to be discussing that. All right. I take live callers. Call in 515-602-9639. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. I'm taking all callers. I'm hot. I'm so fired up, so ready to go. Let me get into the show. Listen, I am the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message right back. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I am also, okay, on Twitter as well. You can go on over to Twitter, type in at the Long Beach Joe, at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter. All right. Follow your boy. I'll follow you right back and let's go back and forth. I like talking to people, all right? About this football team. Some people just hit me up to talk to me about life. Hey, I'm all right with that. You know, a lot of things moving and shaking around here. We got inflation. <laughs> Inflation is hurting a lot of people, and it's not a financial podcast, but, uh, you know, <laughs> not a financial radio show, but, you know, we uh, we discuss a lot of things. So come on over, Twitter, okay, at the Long Beach Joe, at the Long Beach Joe. Talk to your boy, follow me, and let's go back and forth and talk about this team. I'm also on iTunes as well, for those of you out there that do not know, okay? I'm on iTunes. Go on over to iTunes, type in The Long Beach Joe Show, The Long Beach Joe Show on iTunes. Subscribe to the podcast on there, all right? Give me a five-star rating and leave me some feedback. Let me know what you folks think about what I'm doing here on my show. I'm also live as well on YouTube. Some people don't know that. Some people listen to the show right on on. On, on iTunes or via wherever they get their podcast from. Some people, you know, listen to the show on Blog Talk Radio. Again, I'm on Blog Talk Radio as well, Blog Talk Radio backslash The Long Beach Joe Show. And uh, they don't know, hey, Joe, you know, you're live. That's what they tell me when they see me. Hey, Joe, you be live on YouTube. I didn't know nothing about that, you know, especially the ladies. They come up, they say, Joe, you, you look good. You're a handsome fella. You know, thank you, ladies. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, you know. I'm here for you, all right? I'm not an arrogant guy. I'm not full of myself. I just work with what I have, you know? So, listen, if you want to check your boy out live, if you want to see what we're doing over here, come on over to YouTube, all right? Go on YouTube, type in Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube, all right? Subscribe to the channel there as well. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, give the video a thumbs up as well. Streams everything that I do and interact with me. Leave some comments on my videos. Leave some comments on my streams. But keep in mind, when you come over here, just know you're going to meet the savages. All right? That's my chat. I call my chat the savages. You know why? Because they're savages. Listen, man, they do not care. Okay? That's why I call them savages. They don't care about you. They don't care about nobody. Nobody is safe. If they don't like your take, they're going to let you know what time it is. They're going to let you feel the pain, okay? They're going to let you know. They're not feeling your take. It is what it is. Salute to all the savages in the building. Jets, Jets, I see you in the building. Dakota, Michael, I see you, all right? Captain K, I see you as well, all right? Y'all keep chatting, keep asking questions. I will come to y'all in a second, okay? We got callers. We'll get to those lines in just a second again. 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. I am taking all callers. Be patient. We'll get to everybody, okay? Now, 
A lot of things moving and shaking around here with the New York Jets who are one and one coming off of a really tough loss to uh the Cowboys. <laughs> and uh here we are now, all right, going up against the Patriots. We're gonna be, you know, facing them this upcoming week. And we're one and one. They're 0 and two. And this is a tough matchup, right? Divisional matchup. We know the Patriots have done so much work. They've been a, a team that's really dominated the division in the past as well. We know all the rings and stuff. But when you look at the matchup between the Jets and the Patriots, boy, has it been really, really miserable to play the Patriots these last couple of years. Oh, goodness. It's been bad, man. As a Jets fan, it's been rough, okay? The New York Jets have lost to the New England Patriots 14 straight times. I would say this again. The New York Jets have lost to the New England Patriots 14 straight times over these last years. All right? The Jets have not beaten the Patriots since 2015. Whoa. Whoa. It's been rough, okay? There's been different quarterback changes. We still haven't been able to get it done. All right? So now we face this Patriots team, and we've got to go in there and take care of business, all right? We've got to get things rolling. We've got to snap this streak, and we've got to take it to them. And I want to start with the Jets offense here, okay? Now, when we start with the Jets offense, we have to talk about something that can really get things ugly, and it's the weather, all right? Now, there's supposed to be a tropical cyclone that's supposed to hit the East Coast, okay, according to the weather reports, on Sunday. And that could greatly affect the game. That could also greatly affect the Jets' offense or offense, period, and how we go about our day offensively, okay? Now, there's supposed to be a ton of rain. I think it's like three to five inches of rain is supposed to hit, and the wind gusts are going to be crazy. There's a lot of talk up to possibly 50 miles per hour wind gusts in certain spots. It's going to be wild. It's going to be very, very nasty. So when I hear about this weather and I hear about what's coming with the, with the cyclone and all these things, the first thing I think to my mind is the New York Jets have got to run the ball. We've got to run the ball effectively. This, this weather and how nasty the game is going to be, it's got to be a game where we straight up go in there and run the ball effectively. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be rainy. It's going to be muddy. This is where running the football matters, okay? I look at the situation and I say to myself, Brees Hall should have way more than four carries. He had four carries against the Cowboys in the last game, four, right? He should have way more than four carries, way more than nine yards. Michael Carter should be involved in the running game as well. Of course, Dalvin Cook, too. We saw him make some moves. He also fumbled uh, in the game against the Cowboys as well. All that's got to get cleaned up. We must run the football effectively. Hackett's got to come in. Nathaniel Hackett has got to come in with an offensive game plan set up for success here and set up for the New York Jets to ground and pound. Now, When we're talking about running the football, of course, one of the keys to making sure that you uh, run the football effectively is making sure your offensive line opens up holes, right? We know the New York Jets' offensive line struggled against the Cowboys. They struggled against the Bills as well uh, in pass protection, right? But we ran the football successfully against the Bills. Now you look at the Jets' offensive line, who struggled in the last game against the Cowboys. Dwayne Brown is dealing with some injuries, all right? He's dealing with the shoulder injury on that, that repair shoulder that he had. He's also dealing with the hip injury as well. And a lot of people had him questionable for the game, but Sulla said in his press conference that he is confident that Dwayne Brown is going to be able to go out there and play. All right, so he's confident at this point, and we'll see. Now, keep in mind, Dwayne Brown has missed three practices. He missed three, all right? So we'll see what happens going forward with that. Wes Weiser as well is dealing with the concussion. He's going to be out for the game. All right, he's going to be out for the game. So I'm looking at this Jets offensive line, and I'm saying to myself, Dwayne Brown, you got to get out there and be better than you were against the Cowboys player. you got to be way better. Um, this offensive line has got to open up holes. They've got to manhandle people, and they've got to keep the chain short. All right? It's got to be third down and manageable. Okay, don't get behind too far. Don't give up no big sacks. So let me tell you something. The, the Cowboys, their pass rush got after us. But it's not like the Patriots can't bring pass rushers as well. They got some guys that can get after it. Judon, oh, this guy has given us trouble for years. He's given us trouble for years and years and years. <laughs> coming off the edge and not just coming off the edge, but also coming down the middle as well. It's the guy that they sent on blitzes to. He can roll. 
We've got to make sure that we get a, identify him and get a hat on him early. Bentley as well, another guy they like to bring to people. Guy, he can get after it too. We've got to make sure, and I'm going to keep saying this, Nathaniel Hackett talked about not under, about underestimating Micah Parsons. <laughs> Yo, Nathaniel Hackett in a press conference earlier this week talked about how he underestimated Micah Parsons in the quick game. He underestimated his speed. Whoa. For the love of all that is good, you better not underestimate any other pass rushers in this league, and you better not underestimate Matt Judon, okay? Or you're going to be in some big trouble, okay? No more underestimating guys. If need be, listen, let's bring out those tight ends. Jeremy Ruckert, I see people in the Savages in the chat. Dakota salutes in the chat talking about Ruckert. Jeremy Ruckert has been phenomenal blocking, Okay. Let's bring her back. If the offensive line is struggling, let's help them out, okay? Bring her back, put him back in the backfield, put Ruckert out there, help chip on a guy like Matt Judon or whoever. Make the offensive adjustments up front so that Zach Wilson does not get mauled, okay? Can we do that this upcoming week against the Patriots? Can we do that, Nathaniel Hackett? Let's do that, okay? We'll be talking about that uh, Parsons comment off the show. I, people are going crazy. Salute to all of, all of the savages in the chat. And then the next thing that I start to look at myself as well, right, is I look at Zach Wilson and I say, hey, Zach Wilson is going to be nasty. It's going to be muddy. We know the wind's going to be rolling. It's going to be rainy, all right? Zach Wilson has to be smart with the football. He's got to be smart with the ball. Again, keep everything third and manageable. Don't do anything crazy. Don't make the big mistake. Again, I thought that Zach Wilson – was solid against the Cowboys, especially the first three quarters. Now, yes, he threw some interceptions later on in the game, but the game was over by then. It was over. He was trying to make a play. He was trying to make something happen. And honestly, two of those interceptions really should have been plays that our offensive players should have made, okay? The one now to the right sideline, when he just that, that was a legit interception. But the other two ones, there are guys could have went up and made those plays. And even Brees Hall talked about how, uh, you know, the team didn't really help Zach Wilson out on the day, all right? Now, I think that Zach Wilson looks solid. I know people are trying to dump on him for the Cowboys game, but if he can come into this game and just do some of the same things that we saw him do early in the Cowboys game, I think we'll be solid. We've seen him. We've seen his growth, okay? We've definitely seen the growth of Zach Wilson. His pocket presence looks a lot better. He was sliding away from pressure. He's not running into pressure. He's not doing crazy, stupid stuff. He's not. You know, there were some missed throws here and there, but that's with every Cowboy, uh, with every, uh, excuse me, uh, NFL player, with every quarterback, okay? They're going to miss throws here and there. But he made a lot of solid plays, and he also made a lot of solid throws as well, all right? And he didn't kill us. He didn't kill us. He looked good. There's an improvement there. So I just need Zach Wilson to be smart, be concise with his throws, get the ball out of his hands quickly, all right? Now, when I look at our, our wide receiver core, Wilson, Lazar, those guys I think are going to be able to eat. I'm not scared of the Patriots' uh, corners at all. Keep in mind that Marcus Jones, one of their cornerbacks, he's going to be on the IR dealing with a shoulder injury. They have another Jones and Gonzalez as well as their other corners, and I think that Wilson Lazar is going to be able to eat. But I'll tell you what, especially with everything being so muddy and dirty, the screen game, I think he's going to be able to get going, short passes, you know, five-yard five yard slants and drag routes across the middle. Things could open up that way because of the weather. Let me tell you. Nicole Hardman, if you get the ball in this guy's hands, and he should be schemed and be featured this week, right? Nathaniel Hackett, if you're listening, one catch, six yards, that's not enough for Nicole Hardman. This is a guy that's a speedster. Let's put the ball in his hands and allow him to wreak havoc on this Patriots secondary. Because as we know, the Patriots defense, what they love to do, what Bilitech loves to do, is take away your number one weapon and make you beat them with somebody else. I fully expect, I'm telling you, fully expect them to double or try to bracket Garrett Wilson and say, look, that guy, Garrett Wilson, 17, you're not going to beat us with him. You better beat us with somebody else. (laughs) You better have somebody else that's going to be able to get up to bat because you are not going to beat us with Garrett Wilson. Not happening. Okay? Not happening. All right? Now, as we look at the New York Jets, defense, right? It's a big question as well. Wasn't able to get much pressure uh, on Dak last last week. Solomon Thomas, I think, was the only guy to add a sack. Can they stop 
Ramadre Stevenson. I think that's going to be the big thing for them as well this upcoming week against the Patriots. Can they stop Ramadre Stevenson? Boy, oh, boy, let me tell you. This guy, Stevenson, has given us problems for years, and we have got to find a way to quiet him. He's, one of, he's their weapon. You hand him the football, he can run. He's a strong runner as well. We've seen him run through arm tackles. He comes out of the backfield and catches the football as well, which is something that we need to be very cognizant of because that's what killed us against the Cowboys. Guys coming out in the flats, guys coming out in the areas, catching the football maybe a yard behind the line of scrimmage and then taking 15, 16-yard gains, constant first downs, chain movers, right? We've got to be on the lookout for that because I think they're going to try to replicate the recent game plan that the Cowboys ran against us, right? They're going to try to replicate that and do that against our defense as well. So we've got to keep our eyes on Ramadre Stevenson. They also have other backs that come out the backfield and catch the football, Ezekiel Elliott. Also, Ty Montgomery as well. So we've got to watch for that. Our, their tight ends, too, Hunter Henry, Gusecki. We know the New York Jets have had struggles covering tight ends, and Henry and Gusecki will give us trouble. We've got to watch out for those guys, especially, again, with Tony Adams being out for the game. All right? Tony Adams being out for the game. He's out with a, uh, with a hamstring injury. So we've got to watch that. All right? We've got to watch that. And we've got to make sure that we get those guys covered. It's going to be a test this week for the Jets' linebacking core. Quincy Williams, C.J. Mosley, all those guys. Keep in mind, the Jets also, there's a lot of missed tackles last week, too. We've got to clean that up. Wrap when you tackle, okay? Now you look at the Patriots' offensive line. They're a bit banged up, too. Trent Brown's dealing with a concussion. We'll see what happens with him going forward. Cole Strange, he's dealing with a knee injury. And then we knew as well as dealing with an ankle injury. That's another one of their starting offensive linemen. So I think this Jets front should absolutely be able to get after it. We should put pressure in Mac Jones' face down after down after down, okay? Down after down after down, there should be somebody, somebody, okay? Quentin Williams, Carl Lawson, Bryce Huff, uh, Jermaine Johnson. Will McDonald should be playing in this game. I'm going to say it again. Will McDonald should not be a healthy scratch like he was against the Cowboys. We drafted him in the first round. He should be playing in this game, and his assignment should be to rush the passer, okay? That's what we brought him here to do. Why he's not playing, I don't know, but he should be playing in this upcoming game. He should not be inactive, all right? These pass rushers in the rotation should be getting after Mac Jones because if you get pressure in Mac Jones' face, that will equal turnovers, okay, especially with a banged-up offensive line. Now, I think our secondary is going to shut down their wide receiver core. I'm not scared of Juju Smith. I'm not scared of Devontae Parker, who's dealing with a knee injury as well. And I'm not scared of Bourne either. Not versus Sauce or Reed or, you know, uh, Michael Carter II. Not worried about it. And even though, again, Tony Adams is out, Amos is probably going to be the guy that's going to step in. Amos, we might see Ashton Davis here and there as well. But we got Amos and Whitehead back there, all right? We should absolutely shut these guys down. Yeah, we struggle with C.D. Lamb, but damn it, that's C.D. Lamb. Come on. You right? <laughs> but all these running around in open spots, that should not happen with this wide receiver core. Sauce should be able to shut these guys down. Sauce and Reed and, and Carter as well. All right? Now we're going to get to these lines, man, because I want to talk to the people. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking on callers. Also, oh, keep in mind, with the, the nastiness, the weather, that's going to affect special teams too. Now, Greg Zerline, um, we'll see if he ends up playing this upcoming game. As we know, he's been dealing with, the, with, the, with I believe, it was a groin injury, right? Now, he was supposed to be kicking today. We'll see if he's going to be playing. That could be big as well in a game that's nasty, that's going to be really, really nasty. It could be close because of the weather. Um, and it could affect the kicking as well. We know the weather will affect the kicking, the wind and all that stuff. It also could affect the punting as well. We got Morstead. Love him a lot. Love him. I think he's a great punter. But that could affect our punting game as well, the weather, the wind, you know, the uh, the landscape as far as the, you know, the field, all that nastiness, the muckiness. It's all going come to come to a head here, and we're going to see what happens. All right? But that's also a factor I think a lot of people need to look at. So, we're going to get to these lines again, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We are taking all callers. Please give 
the stream a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the stream if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, as well, if you'd like to give to the platform, the Super Chat is there. Uh, Cash App is at the bottom of the screen uh, here. You know, anything you give to the platform is greatly appreciated. And as always, man, for new callers, anybody calling in, please make sure you don't curse on my show. It's the only thing I do not allow. Don't curse here, all right? Curse, I, curse on my show. I'll get you out of here fast. I'm talking fast. Faster than we got a lot more out of here. Right? That was fast. He was acting to go, and now he's gone, all right? 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next! Caller I'm going to is my guy, Val. Val, I'm coming directly to you. Steve will come to you next. Other callers as well. Hold on. We'll get to everybody. Salutes to Val, but before we even let this man talk, Val, he is a (laughs) Val, salutes, man. We got the Patriots coming up this week. All right. Sunday, fun day, fun day. Give me your thoughts, man. 14 straight losses. We haven't beat the Patriots since 2015. Just hearing that, man, how does that make you feel? Man, oh, man. This is what you call a must win. The last time we had beat the Patriots was when Eric Decker caught that last pass in oh. overtime from Fitzpatrick and Eric Decker. Hit that um had caught the touchdown. He jumped in the crowd, and we was on an all time high. You know what I'm saying? That was a great, great year. Of course, until the end. Mm-hmm. But other than that, <laughs> we definitely have to win this game. This is a must win. I understand we are one and one, but we do not want to be owing um what is it one and one in the division, and you know our record as well too because we have a very tough schedule. But yeah, man, we have to break this. We have to break this, man. We really have to. Yeah. But I know Pel- yeah. Belichick. Oh, go ahead. No, no, yeah. You know, Belichick is definitely gonna. I, I, I'm, I'm straying away from saying it's a must win because to me it's early in the season. But I understand why you and various other Jets fans as well that I've talked Can't to. I've talked to a lot of Jets fans. I, <laughs> I talk to a lot of Jets fans <laughs> that are like, Joe, we better get this done, brother. Or I'm telling you, I'm a. I'm going to hit the roof. Uh, you know, I, I, I hear it, but, again, it's very early in the season, so I'm, I'm, the roof. I, try to, I try to, you know, I try to hold it down here. But I look at this situation, I said it myself. I'm going I'm to start with the Jets offense with you, man. I'm a little worried, all right? Uh, oh, I'm Hackett worried. says that <laughs> Hackett says, you know, early that he kind of underestimated Micah Parsons. We also saw them struggle as well, kind to, you know, kind of, getting their offense together as far as making adjustments and things. Are you concerned about those adjustments falling into this game against the Patriots? Do you think the Jets will adjust offensively if things are kind of going awry early? Man, I'm just shocked that he didn't make those adjustments during the the Dallas game because Dwayne Brown, he was on the island by himself and he was getting killed. Mm-hmm. But I will say – he has to make the right adjustments. He has to watch different, you know, he has to watch the film. And, you know, he has to change the, you know, like I said, he has to get McCall Hardman involved as well too. Use your speed, yep. to, uh, use your speed, sir, and stuff like that. Have the guy go. He's supposed to be your speed guy. He's supposed to take the top off of the defense and stuff. Use him. That's your key guy right there. Use some Wildcats. Mm-hmm. I want to see something to throw the defense off because if you're running ground and pound, and you're running it just like a regular eye formation, people are going to already know, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, this is going to be a run because they know that we don't really trust our quarterback as much as other quarterbacks in the NFL. So they already know we're going to mm-hmm. be running the ball. So that's obvious because, as you've seen, the Cowboys already know how to adjust to us on defense. So mm-hmm. we already know what's going to happen, Joe, man. I mean, you've seen this time after time. They're going to load up the box and blink mm-hmm. the whole time because they already know we're going to yeah. be running the ball. And they're going to try to turn um, um, Zach Wilson into a passer, and the weather is going to be bad. So, you know, it's, it's going to be yeah. tough. And you already know. You yeah. already called and, it. They're going to try to take yeah. away Garrett Wilson because Garrett Wilson is going to be the mm-hmm. person that he looks out for, and he has to get other players involved. So that's why I say McCole Harmon 
and Alan Lazar is the key pieces that we need to step up. And on top of that, Brees Hall. Brees Hall has to yeah. get more carries and um and uh yeah, and the other running backs as well too. Dalvin Cook. Yeah, now 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 when you say that, yeah, on this on this is beautiful, you're bringing some heat, man. You're talking about loading the box and they're gonna stack and you brought up you know, uh, you brought up Lazard and, and Nicole Harbin in our backs. I think our tight end involvement can, can go up a bit as well. We saw Jeremy Rucker. He's been a beast blocking as well. Uh, C.J. Uzama, all those guys I think can get involved in the pass game too at Conklin. But when you talk about guys stacking the box, right, and that's what we're going to see because that's what everyone does against the Jets. They, they sit back and they say, listen, yep. we're not going to let you go crazy with Brees. We're not going to let you go crazy with this guy. We're going to stack the box and act Zach Wilson. Hey, can you beat us with your arm? What is your level of confidence in Zach Wilson going up against Bilicek yet again? <laughs> we know what the game plan is. Do you think Zach Wilson is prepared for that, and do you think that Zach Wilson will be able to shake everything, put everything together, and go out there and perform at the high level we need him to? Oh, man, Joe, you set me up, man. I'm trying to be nice, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Listen, listen, All right. this show is not my, show my level of... okay. <laughs> People have right. been heated all oh, week. Yeah, yeah. Savages, been all savages, week at this yeah. boy. Yes. Oh man! This is the, Listen, you know, I, give us a take, Val. I want to hear from you. You call in. You call in Earth. I, I am not confident in Zach Wilson. You know this, oh. man. I, I'm not confident in Zach Wilson, man. Listen, wow. that's why I said I just hope we could get some screen passes going. I hope we can make it as simple as possible for Zach Wilson because we have to limit his passes because. What happened last year, Joe, when it was windy and cold and he started blaming the weather because of his accuracy issues. But I will say he did look good in the pocket and stuff. It, was a, it wasn't a clean pocket, but he definitely looked better when pressure was getting to him and he was stepping up. Yeah. And he needs to learn how to drive with his feet as well, too. If, if nobody's open and the pocket is open and you can run through a gap and stuff, definitely do that as well too because then on top of that they will have to adjust on defense so that's that's the level of confidence I see in Zach Wilson but as a thrower as a passer if you're taking away his number one and you have him guessing then he's going to start messing up and then you know you don't want to break his confidence but that's what Belichick is very good at doing as well too he's he loves to take away your strengths so that's, mm-hmm. that's another thing, man. That's why we have to make second and third options for Zach Wilson just in case they take away Garrett Wilson, which their game plan is to do. So, you know, because he's always – if you think about it, every time you see the game, he's always going to Garrett Wilson, and Garrett Wilson's talking to him like, listen, I'm going to be open here and there. So, obviously, you already know who he's going to go to. He's going to try to throw to who he's going to be watching out for. How many times he um, yep. targeted Alan Lazar or Randall Cobb? Only once or twice. Yeah. So, obviously, they're going to mm-hmm. be trying to take away their number one read, which is Garrett Wilson. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I mean, no, you you speak in fact there. Uh, I don't know. I, I look at Zach Wilson, and what I saw in that Cowboys game, I I was impressed. I was really impressed. I see the growth yeah. in him now. Is he Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning? No, he's not those guys, okay? Not yet. You know, maybe in the future we'll see that blossom and mature, okay? I'm the ever – Ever more optimist, okay? But uh, still, I think that Zach, you know, I think that Zach is, once he settles and get his footing, I think he'll be able to handle the pressure, okay? And I know you don't have faith in Zach, okay. and I get it. I get others Others still the same. I'm not, I'm not I mean, asking three anybody, years, but three I think. Years, he, he, oh. hasn't, he hasn't helped me. He, has to, he hasn't helped okay. my case, do you know what I'm saying? So. Okay, okay. <laughs> you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're okay. Now we go over to the defense with you quickly, all right? And I'm looking to see this team bounce back defensively. We know they struggled against the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are great. How concerned are you about the Patriots running game and Ramadre Stevenson? This guy kills us every single time we play them. Do you think the Jets will be able to keep him quieted? And how concerned are you about him swinging out of the backfield and catching footballs like we saw against the Cowboys and even like we've seen from him in the past? Give me your thoughts. First on first. I agree with you. I was hearing what you were saying in your take. I want to see Will McDonald out there as well, too. And I definitely believe that this defense is going to show up. They're not going to be just like how they did against the Dallas Cowboys. I feel like they're going to come with a lot more energy, 
I feel like this team is going to try to take away the running game, and I definitely believe they're going to try to take away the passing. And just like Zach Wilson, the box as well, too, and bring that pressure because Mac Jones, he doesn't like to throw deep because his accuracy at deep is not that strong as well, too. I do believe he likes to throw medium to short range, so they're going to try to do, throw quick um you know, quick passes and stuff like that and short passes. So we could take that mm-hmm. away. The linebackers be on point as Quincy Williams, man, he's really been bowling this year on a, a low key yeah. level as well too. So I definitely believe we will show up on defense and I definitely want to see Will McDonald out there. Yeah. No, listen, we absolutely, Will McDonald should be playing. There's no reason why he shouldn't. And this Jeff oh, Friend has got to get after Mac Jones. This, this Jeff Friend has got to get after Mac Jones. If you get to Mac Jones, turnovers will happen. He'll, it'll happen. He gets hit a lot. You'll start getting flustered. You'll start to see, you know, air and throws left, left and right. Now, before I let you go, Val, because you've been bringing the heat, we saw Coach sure. Keller stand up on the podium. He was talking to the media, right, and the media was talking to him about the roughing the passer calls, and he said that he believes that roughing the passer should be a call that could be reviewed. Give me your thoughts on that. Do you agree with that? And after, then after, go ahead and give me your final score for the Jets, uh, Jets Patriots. Excuse me. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I definitely because that's going to slow the game up and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure they're mm. not going to do that. But they definitely should. And I don't know if you heard the Cowboys and the um not not the Cowboys but the referees of the Cowboys game. They actually yeah. came out and say, "Oh, you know what." That wasn't a penalty. Yeah. Sorry about that. You know, so they definitely came out and said <laughs> that shouldn't have been called, even though they, they let it happen and it scored and it kind of messed us up as well, too. So, yeah, that John Frank and Myers, um, roughing the passer was basically their apology and stuff. So that wasn't even a call as well, too. And also, Joe, I, yeah. I also want to talk about the offensive line real quick, real, real quick. Yeah, I believe quickly, go ahead. Okay, I believe, say if this is wrong or right or whatever, I believe we should take out um, Dwayne Brown. I feel like we should put Makai Becton at left tackle, put AVT at mm-hmm. right tackle, put Tipman mm-hmm. or Mac Mitchell at right right guard. How do you feel about that? I feel like that's a great adjustment. Uh, it, it's shocking now to listen to Jets fans, like, almost scream unanimously to have – Beckton at left tackle. I remember a time where there was a guy. I, you know, I don't. I think his name was Joe. I don't know, but he was saying that you know Dwayne Brown being gifted the left tackle spot was kind of like, oh, that that's kind of weird, and that Makai Beckton is. But whatever, you know, that's in the past. Here, here's the deal. Uh, they talked about that with Sulla, and Sulla said that he wasn't open to doing that. But I absolutely believe that Makai Beckton should be the Jets' starting left tackle. I mean, like. Dwayne Brown, and look, I get he's a savvy veteran, but he he looks old, he looks stiff, he looks like a thirty eight year old tackle, right? That's how he looks. Yeah, he's not he had no playing very games. well. And yeah, he had no yeah, preseason he had no games. Preseason he's games. trying to work himself. He's still dealing with that shoulder injury, so I could if moving Makai would make sense. Tipman coming in at center, I think would make sense. Putting AVT at right tackle, though, I don't know, and putting Max Mitchell. I mean, ATV could play at right tackle. There's no or denying that he'd be solid. Right, right, yeah. Right yeah, I mean, it, it just – it Tipman at guard, maybe putting AVT at, at right tackle I think would be tough. Maybe giving it Max Mitchell a shot out there at right tackle, even though he kind of stunk in preseason, I think could move. But there's a lot of things you can do to move and shake this offensive line. But, again, you'd have to worry about them gelling as well, especially with all the, you know, the games we got coming up. But I could see them, you know, yes. looking to move – move this offensive line and shake it up and move some guys around. Because everybody – I know you're talking about right guard and stuff, but Lake and Tomlinson is terrible at left guard. And it seems like nobody's, exactly. like, really exactly. talking about that. that. That's why when it's like we're but, moving and shaking, we're talking about moving guys to right guard. Like, like bro, left guard is a problem. We, we, com- we could get Tomlinson some people from problem. the wire, but we're not even trying to attempt to get anybody from the wire – and we have the cap space to actually make some moves, but they're not making no moves. So I, I really don't know well, what I this mean, team is doing. The the question is, how much better are the guys on the wire than what we have? I don't think there, there's nobody like out there that's yeah, star studded. I mean, we just got a Boye back. He's back on the, I believe, on the practice squad. So he's a guy we might be able to bring up. But you're not getting like a, you know, you're not getting a, 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 a 
a top all all line a high from here, guy. you know, offensive line. Yeah, you're not getting a Zach Martin yeah, out on the wire. <laughs> like that's mm. not, that's not right, right, right. You're not right, getting right, like right. an Orlando Brown or you're not getting Trent Williams. Trent Williams is not sitting out there on the wire. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not happening. Trent Williams ain't walking through that door. But I could absolutely exactly. see the Jets shaking up this offensive line. But give me your final score uh, really quickly, Val. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. Um, oh, no, I was going to say real quick, and Joe, you was warning us in the middle of the summer. He was like, listen, we got to worry about this <laughs> offensive line. And everybody was like, you know what? Yeah. Don't worry about that, man, because Aaron Rodgers <laughs> is going to get it out of his hands real quick, man. And, you know, you, you definitely let us know. <laughs> but, all right, um, for the score, listen. Ah, man, Joe, you're not going to like this, but, hey, I'm a savage. So, Come on, uh, man. Listen, 14 to to 21, I got the Patriots probably winning this game. I'm sorry. Prove me wrong, Zach Wilson. Prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. (laughs) Okay. All right, listen. Val, I got to slide off. I got other callers. I want to thank you calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Yes, sir. Everybody like to subscribe to Joe, and everything that he says at the end is allegations. (laughs) for those of you that may not know what uh val is alluding to uh there's a system that people use to call in very early on the show and he is often a user of that system and i tell everybody about it at the end of the show and he does not like me to do that because him uh mainly and there's others that use it, I'm not going to lie, uh, but him mainly, he wants to keep it quiet, okay, because he wants to continue to utilize the system. It is legal. It is a legal system, but uh, I'll let everybody know so that they have the opportunity as well, and he does not want that uh, to happen. So I'm going to get back to these lines again, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Next! I'm going to go to my guy, Chris. Chris, I'm coming directly to you. Colin, Steve, I'm coming to you guys. Hold on. New callers as well. Hold on. You got to get to Chris. Listen, hey. salute, Chris. For those of you that do not know Chris, he's a savage. Hey, Chris, what's up? What's up? What's up? Happy Friday, man. Salutes. Happy Friday, my friend. Listen, we're just sitting here talking Jets, Patriots. They beat a 14 game straight. Haven't beat them since 2015. I'm looking at this Jets defense, and I'm saying to myself, Chris, they've got to step up this week. They've got to go out there oh, yeah. and just maul, just maul the Patriots front and get after uh, Mac Jones. What are your thoughts? How many sacks do you think – this New York Jets front is going to be able to produce against this Patriots team. I think they're going to be put a put a couple of sacks on uh, on on that. They got they got really close. They got one second late to to that. If it was one second earlier, they would have got them. You know, so they played they played their hearts out last week. The Jets they just was one second off uh, trying to get Mac uh, uh, Dak last week. They came close though. You know, they almost got yeah. them, but you know they came case late. You know, so. Um, you can't win them all. It was the Dallas Cowboys opening game, all the stuff going on, opening game of the season. And, you know, you're going to give the Jets a pass on that game. But, you know, hey, we we played good for the half halftime, and then uh, it kind of fell apart. But uh, this team, I, I'm kind of confident. I looked at the tape. I, I was like everybody else. But I looked at the tape, and I saw Zach is not uh, – he's not too bad, man. We just got to uh, – help them out in, in, in the protection thing, and then we should be okay, man. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I think yeah. that was more of an offensive coordinator problem. You know, I, everybody just wants to cross the line. And, you know, I was looking at the game last week, and I didn't see any short passes. I didn't see any – I saw everybody trying to get the ball to Garrett Wilson, but no Brees Hall, no Dalvin Cook short passes, no Michael Carter short passes, no screens. You know, these kind of things, like, Dak was doing it. So why couldn't we do it against a team with high pressure and high guys that's a blitzing? And these are the things that mm-hmm. I look at, you know, in terms of the thing. Where's the flea flickers? Where's Nicole Hartman? And it, this that that loss was on the on on the, on the coaching staff, you know, to me anyway. Yeah, 
No, yeah, and even if, again, the defense struggled to adjust as well. We saw a lot of uh, C.D. Lamb running wide open in the secondary. There wasn't adjustments to, like, double him and stop him. There was a lot of issues coaching going as well. I want to go to the offensive side of the ball with you because, like you said, there was a lot of failure. uh, There was a lot of failure to adjust as well against the Cowboys. If you don't adjust against the Patriots, you're going to get killed for sure. Billichek will take advantage of you like like crazy. (laughs) We've seen that before. Now, as we look at this, how concerned are you? Because we struggled, right, last week with the Patriots pass rusher. Now we come in, Matt Judon, he's going to be in town. He's going to be playing. They got Bentley as well. How concerned are you about the adjustments happening in this game? Because they got pass rushers that can get crazy as well. How concerned are you about hacking, making adjustments, and how concerned are you about the Jets' offensive line? I'm concerned about the uh, the the. the uh, I'm not really, you know what? I'm not really concerned like everybody else would show its uh, its character in the fourth game. Even if Aaron Rodgers was still a quarterback, we wasn't going to find out about this team until about the fourth or fifth game because we got so many new players on offense and they're still kind of gelling together. So I, I really, I'm really like telling everybody, you know, kind of calm down and. Like, this is only the second game of the season. Everybody's throwing their hats around and going crazy. I mean, I, we're still heartbroken because of Aaron Rodgers. But there, Zach, Zach Wilson looked pretty good. Uh, I was looking at him. He looked pretty good. And, and if he got some protection, uh, a little bit more a little bit more time, or there were better calls, I mean, we could have been right in that game. We were right in that game. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not just doom and gloom like everybody else because here's why. I've seen this team win tons of games like we did last year and then collapse at the end of the season, right? I want to see consistent mm-hmm. play throughout the season, and then we can say, but we were 5-0, and oh, we were riding high last year, and then the whole thing collapsed. Let's just let's wait to see the whole picture before we make these, these crazy, crazy assumptions about this team. This team this team's going to compete. The defense is going to keep us in games, okay? Last mm-hmm. week was, a, you know, kind of admiration. But there's going to be some games that we win. And then as far as the offensive line is concerned, uh, a lot of the guys that was in the draft, okay, but they're getting beat like monsters too. I mean, uh, one of the guys you were talking about, uh, you know, uh, Brogdon Jones got beat like, like Miles Garrett last week. He was getting beat consistently. So, I mean, I, I look at this team and I look at – and Orlando Brown wasn't signing here either because we got outbid by the Kansas City Chiefs. So I didn't mm-hmm. see the, the, the I didn't see the type of thing and then we were still trying to get players we didn't know if we were going to get Aaron Rodgers. There was a whole bunch of stuff going on throughout free agency. So uh, you know, the, the tackles the tackles thing will take will take care of itself. I believe that Joe Douglas knows what, what we're talking about. He's looking at the open market, he's looking at the thing, but I think it, it you can't judge this team because there's, there's so many new players on this team to about the fourth or fifth game, man. And like I said, if you don't well, listen, believe me. Listen, and, and, I, and I hear you, okay? And, I, and, again, I'm not jumping off of a bridge at all. I, I understand what you're saying. There's a lot of Jets fans that are talking like we're 1-15 and, and we're just 1-1, one one, okay? We're just 1-1, right. one one, all right? right? I'm, I'm right there. But I do have concerns, just like other Jets fans have voiced there. I'm oh, yeah. very concerned, especially about the Jets' offensive line. And you're talking about the fourth game. Listen, so these, this Jets offensive line as a whole did not play together in any of the preseason games whatsoever. Right, like Dwayne exactly. Brown didn't get back off the pup until, right. you know, I think it was like a couple of games before the final Giants game. And I understand, like, right. yeah, well, they got to gel, but in that time that they're gelling, Luke, what's happened? Aaron Rodgers, who, oh, he'll get the ball out of his hands quickly. Did you, anybody watch the first, like, couple snaps that he was dropping back? Bro, he barely escaped the right. sack. Uh, barely escaped the sack before that. Like he was running for his life, and that right. has, the offensive line is so important because again, look, we lost Aaron Rodgers. How many times are you going to let Zach Wilson get hit before we, you know, could possibly lose him? So there's a very important. You must protect your quarterback in this league. And Dwayne Brown again has struggled. Struggled in the first game against the Bills in pass protection, and he struggled against the Cowboys as well. But that that could have been a schematic thing too. But they got to gel and they got to gel quickly because honestly, if we fall behind with a lot of the killers that we have coming up, it's going to be some issues. Now going back to what you were talking about the along the offensive side of the football. 
we know that the Patriots like to take away your number one weapon. Garrett Wilson is going to be a guy that we know they're going to key in on. They're either going to double him, bracket him, whatever. They're going to say, hey, beat him with somebody else. What is your level of confidence in Zach Wilson to be able to find and look at somebody else outside of Garrett Wilson to make offensive plays? I think that we're going to – this is where Dalvin Cook comes in, and this is where Brees Hall comes in. I think we're going to do some great – out of the backfield, we're going to get these guys involved in the game because they are playmakers. And I think that one of the things that, that, that we didn't do, and I looked at what, what, what that Prescott did was he last week is he was hitting his guys out of the, out of the backfield. And I believe that mm-hmm. that's some of the things that we need to do. We got some really good backs. I mean, we didn't even use Izzy Bartikanda. We don't even use that guy. So, I mean, we got some really guys that can break home run, hit, home run hitters out of the backfield, we got to get them. We got to get them the ball in space and let them do their thing. And 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 that was what one of the problems last week. And I looked, I looked at the game intensely, and I didn't see that. And I was like, what do we have these backs for when we're not using them? I mean, that, I mean that mm-hmm. neutralizes pass rush. That neutralizes uh, great defenses when you have to cover Michael. Why, why is Michael Carter and Dalvin Cook are not playing at the same time? I don't, I don't mm-hmm. understand that. You know, I just. Yeah. These kind of things I look at, and I look at, then I look at the coaching. I look like, hey man, there's something going on back there where we're not, you know, we're not we're not utilizing the playmakers that we have because, unlike other years that we faced these teams, we didn't have playmakers. We got some guys now, mm-hmm. guys that can that can take it to the house, man. So they got to just put it yeah. in their hands. So I think we're gonna do a good job. I think we're gonna win this game, man. Last week I told you okay. I think Get, we're gonna win this game. I think yeah, listen, give me your final. Give me your final score prediction then, my friend. Well, I don't think Mac Jones plays good on the road. I think the win is going to be decisive. I give a 28-14 win to Jets. There you go. Oh, 28-14 Jets? That's what he says, yep. okay? I can respect that. I don't like Mac Jones on the road. Listen, Chris, I want to yep. thank you for calling in, man. I got to slide off. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? All right, man. Thank you. Listen, Chris bringing the heat. We're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Salutes to all the savages in the chat going back and forth. I believe it was a, a savage in the chat talking about Lyle Collins, man. Uh, when I was spoke, speaking about the uh, New York Jets offensive line, a lot of guys on the waiver wire. GVH, salutes to you, G. I see you in the building. He says, is Lyle Collins trash? He's available. Lyle is not trash. Of course, he's not the, the offensive lineman that he once was in the league, but he's also dealing with an injury as well. Uh, so who knows when he's going to be able to get back. Uh, I think he's still – I forgot what type of injury it is, but it's, it's, it's a tough one. So we got to see what's happening. But no guys out there are just like – they're not – I'm not saying they're trash, but they're not Trent Williams. They're not going to come in and just immediately bolster your offense, you know, offensive line at least. So we'll have to see what happens going forward. And I know that Joe Douglas is going to be searching the waiver wire He's keeping his eyes on everything. He's always a guy that's going to turn every stone over. I get it. But it's rough going forward, especially with Dwayne Brown dealing with these hip injuries and shoulder injuries, and then he's playing stiff in the games as well. We've got to clean that up because we know, again, Zach Wilson I think is a guy that's taking that next step forward, right? We're seeing him get better. But we know that the offense under him is more limited than the offense under Aaron Rodgers. You have to protect Zach Wilson. You have to. Right? Until he shows us that he's going to really – we have to properly protect him. You have to have a solid run game. All right? Like, you have to have those things. So, you got to wonder. And even great quarterbacks, you have to properly protect them, and you're going to have some issues. So, we'll see what happens with the Jets offensive line going forward. There could be some moving and shaking. We will see. But uh, there's got to be something done, and they've got to step up and play a lot better than they have uh, just in this past game. So, we'll get back to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515 515- Six zero two nine six three nine is the number. Call in next. I'm gonna to go to my guy Steve. Steve, I'm coming directly to you. Colin, I will come to you next. Hold on, Colin. New callers as well. Hold on. We gotta to get to Steve, man. Steve's got something to say. Listen, for those of you that do not know, Steve, he's a savage. <laughs> Salutes. We are sitting here talking Jets, Patriots, man. A lot of things moving and shaking. We haven't beat them since 2015. I'm looking at the Jets defense, and I'm saying, man, Will McDonald better be playing in this game. 
because I want to get pass rush all over Mac Jones. I think if we can get after him, that's going to turn into turnovers. What say you, my friend? Hey, Joe. Well, first of all, thank you again for having me on your show, man. It's always great talking with you about this football team and, you know, seeing where this team is at. So, you know something, Joe? I do agree with you, and especially what you did talk about. See, I live in New Jersey, so I'm definitely going to be feeling what this weather is going to be like all weekend because the weather is going to be nasty. It's going to be crappy. It's going to be raining Mm -hmm. and all that that stuff. It's not going to be a pretty weekend here, unfortunately, here in New Jersey. So the thing is what I'm looking at at this game is we're going up against the Patriots. They're 0-2. We're 1-1. Week number three at MetLife Stadium. You know something, Joe? It's going to be one of those games where it's going to be probably, because the way of how this weather is going to be, it's most likely going to be a defensive battle. I mean, I think we have the better defense than the Patriots do. I mean, listen, the Patriots, they got a good defense too, but I think we have a better defense than they do. do. And it has to show this upcoming Sunday. Last year, Joe, when we played against New England, in both meetings against New England, the Jets defense sacked Mac Jones a total of 12 times, six in the Mm -hmm. first meeting and six in the second meeting. You know, and last year, we we kicked New England's offensive line butt last year. Last year. But... The thing, Joe, that that blew my mind was, and obviously I don't know if, if you if you saw this. So apparently earlier this week, when when the Jets were getting ready for this upcoming game against New England, they actually got a message from the NFL. Do you remember that horrible pa- roughing the passer penalty that John Franklin Myers yeah. had last year on Mac Jones when he went? And yeah. I was on the play when Michael Carter the second picked him off and returned him for a pick six. Joe, yeah. I was beside myself when that pat, when that roughing the passer penalty was called. And the thing is, Joe, you, you mentioned this earlier on Twitter. I actually agree with you. I think roughing the passer, and Robert Sala even said this too, roughing the passer mm-hmm. should be a, a thing that should be review, reviewable. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I, and I know it's going to get a lot of hate, but I'm a guy that looks at it and I say to myself, look, especially when the way that, the, the rough and the passer is going to alter the game. Do I think it's going to happen? Do I think it's going to become a reviewable call? No, because I think they're going to say, oh, well, it's going to slow the game down. That's the last thing you want is a slow game. But, man, when you're making these calls the way that they're making these calls, when you look at the situation, right, what we just faced, that rough and the passer call helped extend their drive, helped extend that Cowboys drive, and eventually they ended up scoring. And we got, I think it was two rough and the passer calls on that drive that they scored, and it extended their drive. That was a killer for us. If we stopped that, that was the same drive that, that soft almost caught the uh, pick six, right, but he dropped it. If we stop that yep. or hold them to those, that helps the New York Jets. And I understand people are like, well, you lost by, you know, a couple touchdowns, but people don't understand that football is a game of momentum. If we stop that, if we stop that and maybe hold them to a field goal or maybe they don't score on there at all, that gives the Jets momentum back to swing back. We would have at least had the ball, right, if, they, if we keep them scoring, we get the ball back, right, we have a chance to score before the half, and then after the half, the New York Jets get the ball back. That could have been a 14-point swing right there for us. That's what's just right back in the game. So it's like, yep. you know, I, I would like to see it reviewed, especially the way that it's being called now. If you even breathe on some of these quarterbacks, and I'm not going to say the name, but y'all know who they are, if you just breathe on them, you're getting a rough in the passer call, and I think that that's, that's completely ridiculous. I think this it's getting a little crazy. And I personally believe that roughing the passer should be a reviewable call. Now, when you're talking about, right, the New York Jets defense, you talk about everything that we've done. I'm concerned about Stevenson, uh, Steve. This guy is a running back that the Patriots use for anything and everything. I think he's going to be coming out of the backfield as well, catching footballs. We saw a struggle against the Cowboys. They did some of the same things, guys coming out of the flats guys swinging out the backfield, guys really taking advantage of the spaces that were open there. Are you concerned that the Patriots offense will try to emulate what we saw from the Cowboys and utilize Ramadre Stevenson in that exact same way? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I mean, listen, Stevenson is definitely a player to watch out for because he is 
one of New England's best offensive playmakers on their team. Team. I mean, I know during the offseason they got Ezekiel Elliott as well, but Ezekiel Elliott hasn't really done too much, honestly, in the Patriots' offensive system. It's mostly been uh, Stevenson. He he literally, in my opinion, is probably their, one of their best offensive players on their team, a player they got to watch out for. And I mean, I will say this. If they shut Stevenson down, that puts more pressure on Mac Jones in the game if, if they do that. Because then Mac Jones would have to see like what else he could do. Like, but but the thing is, is that Joe is that you know going into this game, it's just that I want to beat New England so bad. You know, we we've lost yeah. them fourteen times in a row, and, and it's yeah. ridiculous. We we got to find yeah. a way to finally beat. We we got to finally beat them. We haven't beat beaten them since two thousand fifteen, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, it absolutely is, and I think a big key to that, Steve, is us being able to run the football effectively. We know that Brees Hall is coming off of a game where he only had four carries. Do you think the New York Jets will be able to run the football, especially with the weather that is, is like you said, it's going to be looking like it's going to be really nasty over there you know, on the East Coast. Do you think the New York Jets will be able to run the football effectively against this Patriots defense? Oh, no, I think they could because what happened was, New England, New England in their first couple of games, they've had a tough time stopping the rush in their first two games. I mean, for, uh, their mm-hmm. last game on Sunday Night Football, Raheem Mostert on the Dolphins, he ran all over the Patriots' defense. Yeah, yeah. No, he listen, ran I'm all over you, the Brees. Patriots that Patriots' defense. Yeah, I'm telling you, if Brees and Dalvin Cook – Michael Carter, we get them rolling. I think this is going to be a really good game for the New York Jets. Now, my final question, Steve, before I let you go, Colin, we'll come to you next. Listen, man, a lot of people talking about Zach Wilson. We know that the Patriots are going to come out and stack the box. We know that they're going to try to take away Garrett Wilson. That's what they do. They take away your number one weapon and ask you to beat him with someone else. What is your level of confidence in Zach Wilson to be able to, you know, not to feel the rush, to know that it's coming, but still be able to deliver the ball accurately and on time to other weapons outside of just Garrett Wilson. Do you think he'll be able to properly go to progressions and really step up in this football game against the Patriots defense? Yeah, no, no. I I mean, listen, in order for Zach Wilson to play well in this game, what he needs to do is he's got to play turnover free. He's got to play turnover free football and he's got to play a clean game. You know, don't try to play hero ball. Don't try to do this and try to make big plays. You got to make like those boring plays at, at times. The thing is, that's one of the key things of the game. And and the thing is, we the other key thing is to keep on the defense, keep Mac Jones, you know, like like for making big plays. But anyway, Joe, I'll give you my final score prediction. Yeah, give me, give me for your the final game score on prediction. Sunday, I I, mm-hmm. I actually think that this game is, and if it's going to be a wet, rainy, nasty day. I think it's going to be a, a bit of a low-scoring game. I am going to give the Jets, and I do believe we finally end the losing streak against the Patriots. I give the Jets a 20-13 to 13 win over the Patriots. Oh, okay. He said he's going with the Jets. Listen, Steve, I want to thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? Thank you, Joe. Good night. All right, Steve is on up out of here. Listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines again, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We are taking all callers. Next, we're going to go to my guy, Colin. Colin, we're coming directly to you, okay? But those of you that do not know Colin, he's a savage. <laughs> Colin's also a hater as well. He'll let you, he lets it be known. He'll hate on you, all right? Not on me, but he's going to hate on other people, okay, for sure. He'll hate on y'all, so watch it, all right? Listen, Colin, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. It's good to hear from you. We're talking Jets, Patriots, man. Patriots have beat us 14 straight games. <laughs> 14. Haven't beat us since 2015. Man, oh, man, with everything that's going on with the weather and all that stuff, what do you think are like some keys to victory for the New York Jets offense going up against this Patriots defense? All right, good evening, Joe, and good evening to the Savages. So, before I answer your question, Joe, let me just say I'm here to hate 
but I'm here to hate on the feeling I I'm here to hate on the feeling I have and the feeling a lot of us have. And I don't understand okay. why we have this feeling. So okay, why, go ahead. why do we feel like we're not going to win this game? Like, why are we so scared about winning this game? Like, we're going to lose this game. Why are we the underdogs going into this game? I, I just don't understand, like, well, how is that even Colin, possible with, with the team we Colin, have? Because we, right? Mm-hmm. Well, here's the deal. We've lost 14 straight. We haven't beat them since yeah. 2015. I, <laughs> so, you know, I, I understand why I, some – and it's, listen, even though the Patriots aren't great, you look at their roster, right? They've had worse rosters and beat us exactly. before. Exactly. And That's we right. were supposed to be the team that was exactly. absolutely supposed to destroy them. And, listen, as long as you got Bilicek, I will always say, as long as you have Bilicek, you have a chance, a big chance. But go, go ahead, Colin. I want to hear from you. For sure. For sure, Joe, but my thing is, like, what, why, why do we have to feel this way? This is a game, it, you know, it, it's a home game for us. This is not a game in New England. This is a home game. Why, you know, I just don't get it. Like, okay, we, we, we lost to Dallas, fine, but, you know, I just, I just don't get it. Like, why we have to be the underdogs? Why, why Jets fans have to be? so like scared about this game like you know being so like worried we have in my opinion we have the better team the coaching might not be better but we certainly have the better team so you know Mm -hmm. some clever coaching should 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 cause us to win this game and this game this game should not be close it should be a close game to begin with it should just be a game Mm -hmm. that just go out there and dominate and silence a lot of people and bring some hope back to the fans because right now we don't have any hope in this team since Aaron Rodgers went. Wow. Out. You know? Yeah. I mean, when you no, look at the schedule, listen. like people, we're mm-hmm. already written off like the Chiefs going to beat us. Denver might beat us. The Giants might beat us. That's all I'm hearing. All about, all mm-hmm. about the teams that's going to beat us. Like, well, what about the teams we're mm-hmm. going to beat? Where's the confidence in this team that people can say, Hey, the, yeah, the Jets, this is an easy win. We don't we don't have anything like that. It's like so frustrating well, watching the the games every week. <laughs> here's the deal. And I hear you, Colin, right? I, mm-hmm. I think that we are a great team. I think that we're a good team, okay? And I think that we are very talented. Do I look at I look at it on paper and I absolutely feel like the Jets are better than the Patriots on paper. But again, we've seen, right, in the past where it doesn't really matter because the Patriots will come out there, they're well coached. They're extremely disciplined. Their scheme, and Sauce said it himself, the Patriots' offensive scheme is not, it's not, you know, crazy complex at all. It's very easy to figure out. It's very easy to know what's going on. They get to, you know, their quarterbacks, it's very easy for them to figure things out. Even people talk about their defense not being very complex, at least from the outside looking in from everything we're saying, guys in the league, analysts, players that play, oh, they're not very complex. Then how have they won so much, Right. If the if we see well, Patriots teams that technically on paper were not good and they won Super Bowls or made deep runs into the playoffs, so that's the, they're so disciplined, right? They're so disciplined. They they go out there. They may not be as talented as, as other teams. They may not be, you know, just physically off the charts, but they go out there and they do their jobs and they execute. That's the big thing with them. They execute and they do not shoot themselves in the foot, make big mistakes. Look at the last uh, – the, so, the games that we lost to them last year. Our defense was spectacular, but we couldn't get it done offensively. They beat us on a punt return and then beat us with some other stuff. We should have won those games easily. Didn't get it done. So I hear what you're saying, right, that we should go out there and we should dominate them. But I, I understand why some Jets fans are a little bit cautious, especially with the Patriots. We haven't beat them to, since 2015. We have not done it. But that doesn't mean that we can't do it this upcoming week. And that's why I'm with you, Colin. And I want to talk to you about this now. You look at what's going on, right? Weather's going to be nasty on the East Coast. It's going to be real nasty in this game. Raining, windy. To me, that brings a recipe of the New York Jets need to get the run game going. Ground and pound. Hand the ball off, right, to Brees Hall. Hand the ball off to Dalvin Cook. Michael Carter, get everybody involved. And take it to the Patriots on the ground. Do you think that the New York Jets, will have big success running the ball at this Patriots defense. Well, they, they, they should, Joe, because you have Brees Hall, 
you went and you got Dalvin Cook, you got um um Carter, Michael Carter, right? Um, you have Izzy. You have you have the weapons. You have you have the people in place to do that. You know, so if if they can't get that done this week, then it's I'm gonna blame it on the coaching. Because if you have all all these pieces in place and you can't mm-hmm. pull out a win, then the then then the coaching is gonna have to be blamed, whether it's on the defense, the offense, whatever it is, the coaching is gonna have to take the blame if this team leaves mm-hmm. this week. It's not gonna be Zach Wilson's fault. It's not gonna be anyone else's fault. It's gonna it's gonna be coaching. It's gonna be yeah. plain and simple. I mean, listen, you- this team got out coached because they got the receivers, they got the tight ends, they got the running backs, they you know they got the defensive players, they got like they said this was a Super Bowl ready team, a quarterback away from the Super Bowl, and we got Aaron Rodgers, he got hurt, fine, but you know what, you don't need Zach Wilson to be Aaron Rodgers, you just need him to, you know, play the game and play smart, and he can yeah. do that. Yeah. He showed last week he can do that, so. Mm-hmm. Again, if if we can't win this game at home, this is on the coaching. This 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 is not mm-hmm. anything else but the coaching. Okay. Okay. Listen. That's and that's, coaching, that's how I that's how gonna... I feel about the team. Because why is it that Belichick can win so much with a team that doesn't have the talent like we have? It's coaching. Mm-hmm. It, it's it comes yeah. down to coaching. You know, so no, listen, and I hear you. Colin, gonna have when to, you look um, at the coaching, yeah. especially when you look at it against the Cowboys, right? We we question coaching. There was offensive adjustments we thought should have been made, where Parsons shouldn't have been able to go as crazy as he did, especially against our offensive line. He should have been done with. There was questions about coaching on our defensive side of the ball as well, lack of adjustments. I'm hoping that that get cleans up this upcoming week as well against the Patriots because when you are not on. Like point against the Patriots, boy oh boy, they'll put you away. That's what they do. They put you away. And I want to go to the defensive side of the ball with you real quick. Yeah, my defensive side of the ball with you real quick. When you look at it, right, our defensive front should absolutely destroy them and get after them. And but I'm a little bit concerned about Ramadre Stevenson, right? Here's a guy that they utilize coming out the backfield, catch the football, he runs around. How concerned are you about him? you know, facing up against the Jets' defense as well? Uh, Joe, I'm not. I'm not concerned about this Patriots team. At wow, all. really? Okay. We should beat them. No, confident. no, because we should, be, we should beat this team, Joe. I mean, okay. this is a game we have, we, you know, we have to win. They, they are not a better team than us. We are a better team, and this is a, this is a game we should win. They should be worrying about Brees Hall, Dalvin Cook, Michael Carter, they, I think they have more to worry about than we have to worry about. So, you know, okay. I, I am least worried about the Patriots. I'm more worried about the coaching on this on this team. You know, what are they going to dial up? Are they going to keep doing the same things they do day in, day out that doesn't work? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what okay. my concern is. The frustration is, you know, you, you see, you know, third and one, third and inches, mm-hmm. and everyone in, in the world knows they're just going to try to run it right up the middle. There's there's nothing creative that they try to do. You know, it, it's, okay. it's just okay. so obvious. So it, for me, this this game is a win, and, the, and it's going to be – the win is going to be determined – or the points are going to be determined on how, how well they, they all coach this week, whether it's going to be yeah, by three yeah, points okay. or it's going to be by ten points. Okay. Well, give me a fi- give me your final score prediction, Kyle. Uh, because of the weather, I'm gonna say this is probably gonna be a 16-13 win for the Jets. Okay. <laughs> Kyle is ready to go. Listen, Colin, I gotta slide off. Next time I have a show, yeah. I want to hear from you. All right. All right, Joe. Take care, buddy. All right. Listen, Colin is ultra confident. He says, listen, teams need to be worried about us. We don't need to be worried about them, okay? All right. All right, cool. Like, I listen, I, I love it. I love that confidence. We're going to see what happens because uh, I got some questions. I'm wondering, can the New York Jets 
coaching staff make adjustments? Can they do that? Can they get it together? Right? Don't, if you are not prepared, if you have not dotted your I's and crossed your T's against Bill Belichick, <laughs> oh, brother, okay, he'll put you to sleep. Okay? He'll put you away. Trust me. <laughs> if you ain't got it, he'll put you away. He'll expose everything about you, even if you think that you're not, you're way more talented than him or his team. He will coach circles around you. Trust me. We're going to get back to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Salute to all the savages in the chat. I see y'all. Keep asking questions. We'll come to you guys in a second. I know Tony Adams is out. I think uh, Amos is going to be the guy that's going to be stepping in for safety. We might see Aston Davis as well. So we're going to see what happens going on with this Jet secondary. 515-602-9639 is the number as well. Call in, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, give the stream a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. We're getting back to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in next. I'm going to area code 315. 315, we're coming directly to you. Okay, 315, you're looking like a new caller. Give me your name and where you're from. 315? Hello? Hello, Hello? how's it going? Give me your name where you're from. Oh, I look like a new caller. You're looking like a new caller? Yeah, I called called a few times before. Yeah. Um, oh, give, give me your name. My name's David. Oh, da- oh salute. First of all, I, I didn't recognize you. The system didn't recognize you. Listen, David, for those of you that do not know, David, David is an absolute savage. <laughs> I think this is a new number, David, but David. Oh, my bad. That's right. Talk- oh, Oh, Joe, I apologize. I changed the number um, because we're in okay. transition of our things. I had forgotten okay. we did that. My bad. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, no issues. I'm like, so, something's happening here. But I heard y'all say, yeah, that's my guy, David. Listen, we are talking Jets Patriots, David. And, you know, the, the takes all over the place, right? We got some people that are ultra confident, some people that feel like, oh, there's a lot of questions going into this game. Patriots have beat us team straight. We haven't won since 2015. When you look at the offense of the New York Jets, do you think we'll be able to go in there and run the football effectively? Because that's what I think is the key to winning this game, especially with the weather and how nasty it's going to be. I think if the Jets go in and get Brees Hall rolling, get Michael Carter rolling, get Dalvin Cook rolling, it's going to be much easier to get a W against New England. All right, what are your thoughts on that, man? Well, I agree with I agree with that, Joe. Um, that's an excellent observation that um, the weather will determine a lot. Um, but, Joe, I'm still trying to finish that portion of humble pie that I'm still working on from my last week's um, <laughs> prediction. I predicted we'd win by 10 points. And um, it was contingent on the uh, very point I have in calling, which is if, if Belichick um, can figure out that the Jets are going to do what he thinks they're going to do, and the Jets do – what Belichick and his staff prepare for, then I think we're going to have a hard time winning because we need the element of surprise. Like I said last week on my take that we can't tie Zach Wilson's hands up, even though they know, we all know what we see when we see Zach. If he is our first string quarterback, we can't treat him like he's JV. He has to be our varsity. He has to be our guy. And we have to let everybody that we play know that, He's our he's our varsity guy, and we're going to treat him mm-hmm. like a varsity quarterback. So we're we're capable of anything. I'm watching that now again. We don't have the um, offense like the Niners, nor their ability to scheme like that. But the Niners Ooh. really schemed well against the Giants. You couldn't tell what they were going to do because yeah. they had really good motion. Yeah, yeah. and and so Ooh. the Giants couldn't prepare. The, the Joe, uh, listeners, the, the the Jets have to do that to win this game. Even if the rain, mm-hmm. even if the elements are um, an issue, the, the, the defense on the Patriots have to be concerned. I don't know what they're going to do. We haven't seen the Jets mm-hmm. do this before. We didn't see that motion before. Um, this isn't on the tape. Uh, we didn't prepare for this. Oh, wow, they did that? So you get the defense on their heels. 
So they're not mm-hmm. like stacking the line, targeting Zach, knowing there's going to be controlled, limited throws with limited motion, limited schemes because we all we know that they don't believe in their quarterback. So Joe, I think mm-hmm. the whole the way to win the game is we got to razzle dazzle, not extreme. Keep it controlled, but keep the movements. Get the slot receivers cutting quick, brisk um, uh, movements so that they can't follow them easy. And, and you get, that, get them freed up there, throw a five-yard pass with some room to run. And, and then the next mm-hmm. time you fake that up and then you throw. Or, or Zach uh, looks like he's going to throw and he hands it off because you've got certain motion um, uh, keeping mm-hmm. them in surprise whether you're gonna, he's going to hold that ball or hand it off. They have to show something new. They got to get creative. I know they only had a week to do it, but they need to prepare like uh, f- for this game like the Patriots never saw them play before. They can no, win listen, and, and, and I'm, I'm right there with you, David. I hear you. You got to change things up. You got to give the Patriots a different look. They adjust. We know they adjust quarter to quarter. They'll come out first and look completely different in the second. They'll come out after the half and look like like a completely different beast than they have before. And I hear you. We've got to change things up. We've got to absolutely make adjustments. We've got to do our thing. But I think another key to that is the condition of our offensive line, right, when we talk about success offensively. Now, there's been a lot of things going on. We saw them struggle against the Cowboys. Like you said, you had to eat some humble pie. I know we kind of all did. I did pick the New York Jets to beat the Cowboys, and we saw Parsons have a day. We're yeah, going i got to plenty of leftovers, Joe, if you want a slice. <laughs> I, I, I've had enough. I just put it in the freezer. We'll 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 <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll respark that uh, you know in the upcoming weeks. All right, but uh, listen, I look at the situation and the offensive line right now is a little shaky. You know, Dwayne Brown hasn't played or hasn't practiced, excuse me, in three days. He's dealing with a shoulder injury and a hip injury. Uh, you know, they're, they they've struggled. They struggled against the Cowboys. They struggled to find their footing in pass protection. How confident are you in this offensive line going up against a Patriots front and a Patriots defense that is known for bringing pressure? That's what Belichick does. He gets in your head. Right. He'll stack the box. We know they're going to do that against Zach, and he'll send everybody. They got Judon. They got Bentley. Do you think that this offensive line will be able to take care of business and keep Zach clean if he needs to drop back and do his business? I, I think they can if everything's less than 2.5 seconds. So I think the plays that they got to do got to be like quick chops, quick blocks that um, attack to the point, and then the play is in motion in less than two seconds so that you don't give the defense time to zero in. Everything's got to be quick, and it has to be creative, like I said earlier, and it's got to be slightly different than what they saw on tape so they don't have an already preconceived when they get into a certain formation. The defense um, leader doesn't see it and then call a play. To, to deal with that, what he's seeing, and then they react quickly and stifle it. They got to show a little creativity. They got to do it quick. Everything it cannot be slow. It cannot be three seconds or longer. Zach's cooked. He's, the ball has to be released within two seconds to two point five, whether it's handed off or thrown. And and um, yeah. all the planes got to be designed for that because of the weather and because of the scheming abilities of the Patriots. I think if they can do that, Joe, they can they can win this game. Yeah. Now I just got to get rid of ball. on the offensive. Yeah, continuing on the offensive line, and that's a great take, David. But continuing on the offensive line, there's been a lot of Jets fans that have been calling for the line, for there to be a shakeup along the line. A lot of people now are screaming for Makai Beckton to be the starting left tackle. Some people want Lakin Thompson taking out a starting lineup altogether. People are talking about moving McCon- Connor McGovern, excuse me. There's been a lot of, lot of talk about different, you know, Tipman being installed. What are your thoughts? Do you think the New York Jets offensive line should be shooken up at this point? Well, that, that, that's definitely an option, and uh, hopefully they're able to make those, um, those decisions and they have the personnel to do so. But, again, my, my, main, my main point is what, work with what you got, what you can put together, but everything quick. They're not strong enough. They're not healthy enough to overwhelm the Patriots. they got some thick, strong guys in that front line. Those linebackers can hit and stick good. So mm-hmm. with, the, with the defense like that, it's, everything's got to be fast, and it, has to, and it has to be something they haven't seen before so that they can just, oh, I know what this is, and gobble it up. So, and then I think they can do it. They've got to get creative. The, the players, you know, they've got to open the playbook up, um, expand it a little bit, get rid of the ball quick, mm-hmm. hand it off. Every, it can't be slow, even though the weather's bad. It has to be quick, sharp, concise offense that is smart and fast. 
and striking yeah. and limited huddling, just almost even no huddling at times. Boom, 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 boom. You know, just like mm-hmm. you're, they're fighting a war and striking, striking, striking. I think if they can do that yeah. and just keep the pace, keep the pace guessing, keep them on their heels, everything quick. I think they can win. Otherwise, they're going to – yeah, you're right. Our offensive line isn't strong enough. They're not going to be able to – long passing blocking schemes where Zach's got three seconds plus to throw it in. He'll get killed. Mm-hmm. It's got to be quick. Yeah. Get that ball out of yeah. his hands and get it into a running back's hands or a wide receiver option, um, you know, or, or a tight end, quick throw. Everything quick. Quick throws to the receivers and everybody moving and cutting and slicing and dicing. Doing that, they got a shot. Yeah, no, listen, you're, you're bringing the heat now to just talk about the defense for a second with you, David. You look at we kind of struggled to get to Dak last week. I'm looking at this Patriots team, and I'm, I'm kind of licking my chops here. I'm saying Quentin Williams, Bryce Huff, uh, you know, Jermaine Johnson, guys should get after it. Carl Lawson, they should be in Mac Jones' lap all day long, okay? And I'm saying to myself, there is no reason why we should not see Will McDonald playing in this football game. Give me your thoughts. Do you think the Jets pass rush will be able to get after Mac Jones? And why do you think we haven't seen Will McDonald on the field, man? I don't have enough information, Joe. I'd like to hear your take on that. I think you're better informed than me, so I don't want to pretend I have good insight to that. But I will say this. For Will McDonald? Yes. I'm really not sure on that whole dynamic. But I will say Mm -hmm. this, that the, the Patriots aren't going to throw the ball a lot. It's going to be probably going to do like what I was saying. Everything's going to be quick, short passes. They're going to rely on the running yeah. game. My concern for our defense that I have seen so far with my eyes is tackling skills. we got to, we got to yeah. get our tackle and wrap and stick quick. No arm tackling. Strike, hit hard, and, and prepare for more of a running game than a passing game. we got the passing mm-hmm. defense. Our guys, Sauce and all them guys, can cover these guys. But but the problem is, can they can they tackle in that first hit? Are we getting that running back or that receiver down when those quick throws are going to do, crossing pro, uh, patterns and things like that? Are we hitting them at three yards and they're going down, or are we hitting them at three yards and they're, going, they're getting five more? If they're getting five yeah. more because they're breaking tackles, we're in for a long day. So that's my concern yeah, about the no. defense. Yeah, you're talking, you're talking absolute facts there, David. That was a great take. And the Will McDonald, I don't know why he's not on the field because – if we're talking about pass rush, that's one of the reasons why – one of the main reasons why everybody was so excited about him was, hey, yeah, we didn't get Broderick Jones, but Will McDonald's going to come in here. We're going to be able to rush the pass and get after people. And I think that rotation talk that we, we constantly were talking about all this offseason, even the plays that we saw him make in preseason, I think everybody's confused as to why this young man is not hitting the field, why we're not seeing him more early in offense. So we'll see what happens going forward. He was yeah. a healthy scratch against the Cowboys. He should not be a healthy scratch. This week against the Patriots, we need to get it rolling. We need to get pressure on Mac Jones. Now, my final question before I let you go, David, you've had a great call, man. We heard Sulla get to the podium, right? The league called him and basically said, hey, look, <laughs> those roughing the passers calls last week, yeah, they were poop, all right? They weren't very good. They weren't roughing the passers. Hey, we're sorry, right? Okay, you know, a dollar short in the day late, right? Game's over, whatever. You're sorry about making those calls. But he also went on to talk about how, he believes that rushing the pass or roughing the passer, excuse me, he believes that the roughing the passer call should be a call that should be able to be reviewed. I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think that roughing the passer is a call that should be able to be reviewed by the referees? Uh, I, I agree with that. Only if when the refs huddle after a particular call and there's a, there's some confusion and they, they're in mm-hmm. disagreement, then they should because we got enough delays with these, um, with all this uh, looking at tape, this, yeah. this in bounds, out of bounds. And you don't want to lose mm-hmm. the fun of the game. And and I, I'm old school, Joe, I'm 59. So I I remember watching the play and everything, you know, it, whatever the ref says goes, and you live in, and mm-hmm. you live with the moment. But when, when you're always yeah. looking for that little yellow box to pop up and any questionable call, like if you see a good stick on a quarterback and he's down and then you're worrying, is the yell, oh, is there a flag? Or if there's a catch yeah. and he's hit a little hard, is there a flag? Or is it inbounds out of bounds? That takes part of the game away for me personally. So I don't want yeah. to lose any more of the moment of the game, even though the refs are questionable in some of these calls. But I think it's a fair point. I mean, I heard that take by Salah today, and uh, I said, yeah, that, that, that would be nice. Can we do it, though, in a quick, concise manner so you don't lose 
the feel of the game, and you're just like, oh, another delay. Uh, uh, i got to go to the ice box. Where's the Pepsi or whatever your favorite beverage is? So I don't want to see <laughs> that long. But, yeah, yeah good point. You know, I, I, I think that's, a, that, that's yeah. open for discussion. Yeah, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a guy that's in agreement. I think we should. But like you said as well, I like to be quick. But I think some of these rough in the past are calls. I mean, when you look at how it impacted us against the Cowboys, it, it gave them a score on one of their drives, which could have really right. turned momentum no, for us, fair. right? If uh, you hadn't got that, we have been able to get them off the field. Yeah, yeah that's embarrassing like kinda, to admit like, that. But, but, Joe, maybe we can get a little NBA here that, you know, how if they make a bad call, then they kind of throw one the other way to the team. Maybe the rest will be like, yeah. you know, we got to, we got to, we got to, you know, we're, we're going to look the other way with some mild things with the Jets today. They, they've been getting killed yeah. lately, but no, I yeah, think that I could mean, be real. You know, I think they could do that yeah. a little bit. The so maybe that'll call. give us a that's little that. bit of a lead way here. Yeah, that's that makeup call. We call that the makeup call in, a, right. in the NBA. You know, either you look yeah. away or you make a call or, you know, that's not really there, but you're trying to make up for what you just did. So I can see that. You know, we'll see. Now, David, this is a phenomenal call from you. Before I let you go, give me your final score prediction. Jets, Patriots, who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? How do you think it ends up? Well, let me let me say first, I'm um, I'm very afraid of this. I'm afraid of this game. And, I, and that last caller, you know, I, I'm like I'm like, yeah, I'm guilty of what he's saying. I'm afraid of this game. So, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to say this with great trepidation and much humility. I say Jets win 17-14. Okay, he took the Jets. Let's go. Listen, David, phenomenal call from you from you know your new spot. I hope your transition and everything is going well. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, all right? All right. Sorry about that. I forgot that, Joe. You have a good day now. Go Jets. (laughs) Go Jets. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, uh, man, what a show. All right? Got a lot of things moving and shaking here. Again, I am in agreement. I think the New York Jets should absolutely – or, excuse me, I think the league should absolutely be looking to, uh, you know, put that in a position where they should be able to to review – roughing the passer calls, okay? Because, man, the way that they can turn games, and there are so many quarterbacks that honestly often get bailed out by that call. And I understand that this is an offensive league. I understand, you know, face the league is quarterbacks, blah, 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 so on and so forth. But come on, man. Like, you're not even allowing defenders to really be able to make a play. What are they supposed to do? John Franklin Myers literally was thrown into Dak Prescott. He was thrown into him. Michael Clemens hit him, bro, it was right there. Like, come on now. Come on now. Now, before I close the show out, this has been a hot show. Listen, I'm going to break this down. Now, with the weather and everything that's going on here, it's going to be tough, right? It's going to be a nasty game. We need to run the football effectively, man. Brees Hall, Michael Carter, Dalvin Cook, they've got to get these yards. But I got a feeling that, you know, Bilitech knows what's up. I got a feeling that he's going to have a game plan that's going to be fully ready for that. They're going to stack the box like they did in a lot of those games these last two years since Zach has been here. And uh, I think they're going to put pressure. And I think this is a game where Zach is going to have to show, even with the weather, that he's going to be able to be successful into short to intermediate game. Short to intermediate He's going to have to be able to make those plays to keep the chains moving. That's what he's going to have to do. And I think a lot of what we see is going to come down to him just making quick throws. I'm a little concerned. Again, Nathaniel Hackett, I like him. I know people was like, oh, he's just Aaron Rodgers' buddy. That's why we brought him in. I don't believe that to be true. Okay? (laughs) I don't believe that to be true. Okay? I guess they are friends, but I don't think that's the only reason why he was hired as the New York Jets offensive coordinator. I believe that Nathaniel Hackett is a solid offensive coordinator that didn't have the best game plan against uh, the Cowboys. But here we are against the Patriots. I think he'll be able to put some things together. And I think that this week he'll make offensive adjustments need be. Okay? I look at the defensive side of the ball, and I'm saying to myself, this Jets defensive front is going to show up in a big way. They're coming off of a game. It wasn't their best defensively. I think that this game, they're going to step up, show up, and show out to let people know we're those guys, okay? We're those guys, and we're not playing around. It's not a fluke. Yeah, we had a rough game against the Cowboys, but y'all ain't the Cowboys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, the Cowboys, great team, one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, we had a rough game, 
But y'all ain't the Cowboys, though. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the Patriots. And I think they're going to step up in a big way and have, you know, really make some plays. I think they're going to be able to get after Mac Jones. Ramadre, I'm a little concerned about him, but I think they're, they're going to have a game plan to corral him. If anything, the tight end position is really what worries me. Hunter Henry, um, you know, the other tight end they have there as well, man, oh, man, those guys can get after it, okay? And we've got to be concerned. Henry and Gusecki, ooh, we got to worry about those guys, okay? I'm a little concerned about them, especially, again, with Tony Adams being out. You got Amos in the building. I'm sure they're going to bring safeties down to kind of help with the, with the tight ends in coverage. You know, I'm a little bit worried about them. Okay, because those guys, especially in the red zone, they get big down there. Okay, so we got to make sure that we keep those guys in check, too. I'm not worried about their wideouts at all. I'm not worried about Parker. I'm not worried about Bourne. I'm not worried about, you know, any of those guys. I'm not worried about Juju. I'm not worried about them. Not against our secondary. Not against Sauce, Michael Carter II, or Reed. I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm just more worried about, you know, those tight ends getting loose and getting rolling. So with that said, all right, I am taking the New York Jets to break the losing streak, okay, and beat the New England Patriots 10 to 14. 10 to 14, I'm taking it. I'm taking the Jets, baby. All right, that's what I'm taking. Now, before we uh, close things out and shut it down, I'm going to go to a guy in Atlanta, okay? We got a caller in the building. I'm going to Atlanta, okay? 404, we're coming directly to you, all right? For those of you that do not know, this man from 404, he's a savage. (laughs) Salutes to you, my friend. We're sitting here talking Jets, Patriots. I just gave my breakdown of what I believe, you know, is going to happen in the game. I took the Jets. Now, we know that this game is going to be nasty weather-wise, okay? We got rain. We got wind. The cyclone is supposed to be hitting the, the East Coast. I'm looking at the Jets' offense, and I'm saying to myself, we've got to run the football effectively. Do you think that Brees Hall, Michael Carter, and Dalvin Cook will be able to achieve that against this Patriots defense? Woo, hey, Joe, man, man, glad to hear you doing the show again, and thank you for letting me on. Always a good time Absolutely. talking to you, brother. Thank you. This is this is a dude. This is a tough one. I, I would say think about that Bills Patriots game a few years ago where the wind was crazy and we just saw running all night. And if that's going to be the case, I'm assuming that the Jets are going to be able to pull out the victory in the way that you're talking about. But I'm, I'm not expecting anything more than thirteen ten or thirteen nine, something like that, like a mm-hmm. real ugly old school physical football game and the reason i'm giving the uh the 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 big up to the jets is you know the old squeaky wheel theory man when you get Brees hall Mm kind of upset about the amount of carries that he uh received last week and then you get a game like this this week where they're like oh you you want more carries huh okay we're about to feed you all the carries you can handle man so i I think (laughs) Brees is it, it is such a talent that he's going to make enough plays uh, for them to win. Because think about it, both teams are going to be really conservative and buttoned up, hoping that the other side makes the first mistake because that's the mm-hmm. you know, clearest path to victory when you're dealing with weather like this. But, yeah, man, I haven't talked to you since before that faithful, uh, that, that terrible, terrible day uh, where we saw that thing yeah. happen. That shall not be yeah. mentioned. But That shall not. <laughs> and at this point, man. Oh, that was rough. Coach up, Zach, the best you can. Mm-hmm. Man, I want to go get Gardner Minshew, man. I want to go get Gardner Minshew. Really? Look, we're already we're really? already all in for the season. The tickets have been sold. We got the primetime game still. The expectation is still the expectation as far as getting things done. Mm-hmm. I I got no problem with going to get Gardner, man. And even if he, just, even I, if he doesn't start, I don't mm-hmm. care just to have the extra insurance there. Listen, and, and I hear you. I hear you. And I, I've, I've, we've talked with Jets fans ever since, you know, what happened with Rodgers. And there's, 
Rodgers has talked about possibly coming back later on this season. We'll see what happens. You know, modern medicine, we've talked about that. People started call, calling me Dr. Joe when I started talking about some of the things that happen, that can happen now with modern medicine. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the future with that. But I look at it like this. People talk about Garner Minshew. I mean, there's nobody really available on the market that is going to make you significantly better. Of course, we know that the New York Jets have also come out, fell out of his own mouth and said, listen, we're going forward. Zach Wilson is going to be our starter. He's going to be our starter going forward. That's it. I don't think there's anybody available out on the market, really, that's going to make the New York Jets significantly better. Nobody. People talk about Colt McCoy. People talk about various other guys. Carson Wentz, who is not good at all. Garner Minshew, you know, I know he's with his squad. I don't think they're even going to give him up. And if they do, they're going to want a lot more than what he's actually worth because they see the New York Jets are in a situation. And I don't think that Gardner Minshew is really that great either. I know that he's doing his thing, but he's not really that good. So whoa, whoa, I think whoa, here, whoa, 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 he's not great. Of course, <laughs> I'm not saying yeah, he's great. Yeah, you know, we're I, not. I get it. Like, we're not, not looking for great. He's not great. We, oh, yeah, the but job he, is game manager, mm-hmm. limit mm-hmm. mistakes, and throw the mm-hmm. ball short to intermediate with a high completion mm-hmm. percentage. Like that's all that's being asked of anybody. Yeah, but you got to back for the Jets this year. Yeah, but you got to ask yourself this. Gardner Minshew has to come in. He has to learn a brand-new offensive system, right? That takes a while. Then he's also got to understand the system to a point where he can go out there and just run it seamlessly. Then he also has to build chemistry with the offense, right, wide outs, tight ends, all these guys, offensive line, everything. And then he's got to go out there and perform. That is a lot. That's a lot to ask. Right, right, right. right. But, but with a scale-down playbook, from though, Joe? Yeah, but with a scaled down playbook, I don't see that as a problem because I, I think we we both know watching Zach right now, we don't have the full playbook as is. So you're already dealing with a game plan specific playbook. So I think it's, it's possible to bring a guy in. And yes, the organization is saying all the right things. We're going with Zach. Mm-hmm. Well, that's basically results dependent. If the results well, are, you know, disastrous, yeah, then that exactly. changes really quickly. So you know. Just yeah, depends on how Zach, if Zach goes can out Zach there, hold on to yeah, the job. Right. Yeah, if Zach goes out oh, there go ahead, and go just ahead. kills us, if he goes out there and kills us on a weekly basis, of course they're going to look to move on and bring somebody else in or somebody else to be a starter. And that honestly, they've already called up Tim Boyle. I think Tim Boyle is going to be that guy that they probably, you know, say, look, we're going we're to sit Zach down. And, but honestly, like I, I think they're, like they said, they're going to ride with Zach. And Zach so far, right, hasn't really killed us. He hasn't. Even when he stepped in for Aaron Rodgers, we look at that game, right? I, all intents and purposes, this was a year that Zach Wilson really was supposed to be sat down and just watching the game from the bench and st- studying Aaron Rodgers, studying this offense, mm-hmm. and getting prepared for whenever A-Rod was going to move on. That's what this was about. Even Sella talked about it. He was supposed to be sitting on the sidelines, eating flower seeds, watching, you know, watching the magic happen. <laughs> well, he gets called right. in. He gets called in, right? He goes in there, and I thought he played decently or solidly against the Bills. He made a mistake. He had an interception, came right back, and he absolutely played well enough for us to get a W. Threw some nice balls. There were some nice throws that he made. He also threw one up to Garrett Wilson, got a touchdown. Looked solid. Against the Cowboys, first three quarters, he was good. He was not bad. He did not kill us at all. And I understand why Jets fans are looking, you know, one foot out the door on Zach Wilson. But he looked really good. Zach Wilson was not the problem against the Cowboys at all. He wasn't. Well, 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 Even that was, that was Hall himself. Basically a Mike Parsons Even Brees Hall himself like, said, yeah. listen, we, we need to do more to help Zach Wilson. He wasn't bad at all. So I don't think it's – listen, are we more limited with Zach Wilson than Aaron Rodgers? Of course, right? That, that, that's, mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that, right? The offense is more limited with Zach Wilson than a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. But I think that Zach – is showing us that he's taking the next step forward. His pocket presence, way better than the last two years he's been here. His footwork, way better than the last two years he was here. We saw him make a great throw as, uh, in, uh, against uh, the Cowboys as well to Garrett Wilson, on time, with speed, moving. Like, he's making plays out there. It's just he's got to do that consistently. And, again, we, we're going to have to see that going forward and showing us. And I truly believe, and I'm being completely honest, that if the New York Jets staff, Robert Sella, all these guys, who their jobs are on the line, we know that, right? <laughs> Jets fans mm-hmm. will be screaming for you to get fired in a heartbeat. Let's keep it real. If they really thought it was a significantly better alternative that was realistic for them, they would have already done that. 
they would have already made that. Like you said, the t- listen, but, the well, tickets have been sold. I, I agree them jerseys, to a certain them jerseys, the jerseys have mm-hmm. been bought. The tickets have been sold. Jets fans want to see a winner for sure, right? But if it was realistic right. and it made sense and they didn't have to, you know, pay out the wazoo to really bring a guy in here that was going to significantly put them in a situation to be stay afloat, and re- they would have done that. I think they look at Zach Wilson and they're like, hey, this kid – can do those things, and that's why I think they're riding with them. Give me your thought on that. Yeah, I don't think the the, the issue is finding somebody that'll be significantly better than Zach. It's, it's not a thing of better; it's a thing of can you fit in this box? Because whatever quarterback we have playing this year is going to play in a box. You're going to play in a very conservative, buttoned up play style, similar to what. Hey, let's let's be honest. That's what the Cowboys did with Dak last week. He said Micah Parsons is going crazy. We don't want to risk anything. And Dak was making dink and dunk short throws, no d- degree of difficulty, but won't turn the ball over uh, type of scheme. And, and that's what you're going to see from the Jets for the rest of the year. So if, if Zach can't provide that, then, yeah, that can be found on the open market. And, yes, you will be price gouged. Yes, we're going to have to pay a premium for it. But for this season, I think it would be worth it because this season going forward is all that matters in getting uh, just a playoff game at least. And then you hope on the miracle of the boy A-Rod coming back like Willis Reed or something walking on to the <laughs> like. Look, I'm not shutting the door on it either, man. Aaron's crazy enough to try it, so I ain't shutting the door on it, man. It is what it is. But, Joe, you, you talked me off the ledge of being unreasonable and offering up everything yeah. to get one of these guys. Yeah. But I think you understand where I'm coming from, where it's like, look, what's going to be asked is not going to be much. <laughs> like, I don't what know. I'm asking you to come in here and light the league on fire. Yeah, listen, I and, and I hear you, and I, maybe I'm crazy, but I'm a guy – that thinks with this defense and the the weapons that we have, I think with Zach Wilson, we could still be a playoff team. I think that. Oh, yeah. when you look at, when you look at the New York possible. Jets, yeah, when you look at the New York Jets, statistically, the greatest offense we have ever had statistically has been quarterbacked by Ryan Fitzpatrick. He was trash. <laughs> he was trash. But statistically, he holds records here offensively. Why? Because all he did, Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, we had a solid running game. We had a defense that was lights out. He just got the ball to guys and let them go do their thing. He wasn't Dan Marino. Mm-hmm. He wasn't Drew Brees. He wasn't Peyton Manning. He wasn't none of those guys. He just got the ball out to guys that can catch and run. And that's I, I, I truly think that with Zach Wilson here, we still have an opportunity to make the playoffs. The door is not closed. He just has to be smart. And I understand the reservations. Okay, for those of you that are about to DM me, like you always do, I love hearing from you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put All that I'm out asking there, for okay? Zach is if the yeah. play is there, yeah. make the play. But besides that, brother, yeah. throw it away and we'll punt. Because okay. now, winning this game conservatively is a possibility yeah. for us. And look, we can do a lot with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can do a lot. No, yeah, I'm that. telling you. I'm telling you. Just got to be careful. Now, before I let you go, all right? We're talking. Give me your final score prediction. Jets, Patriots, who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? How do you think it ends up? Uh, give me the Jets 13-9 to nine in a Ooh, horrible okay. looking game uh, for yeah. fans of new school, high air raid, uh, you know, high scoring offensive football. But for old school fans uh-huh. who want to see some slobber knocker stuff, some real physical football Bill kind of trying to stare us down, playing the same way. Uh, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, dude, I can't wait for it. This, this is old school football. Okay. Let's, let's have at it. And, and, and All right. Fans, okay. Go ahead. See how much Dakota. Y'all see how much Dakota avoided sauce, right? For for all the fans out there, all you people out there who watch C.D. Lamb run away from sauce all night and get all those catches away from sauce. Yeah, sauce is the real thing. Just one day. Yeah. No, listen. <laughs> Dak said after the game, listen, sauce talked to Dak after the game, and Dak said, why would I go at the best player on on that team defensively? Why would I do that? I, I'm not going to do that. And I will if I have to, but I don't have to. So I'm going to go somewhere else. That's smart. Listen, Dak is a good yes. quarterback in this league. He's not like, you know, he's he's good. This is a good guy. He's smart. The, the game plan was smart. 
Jets got an amazing rush. Let's not put ourselves in any trouble. Get the ball out of his hands quickly. Stay away from Sauce Garner at all costs, okay? C.D. Lamb running wide open. Let me just hit you with these dots, and let's get on up out of here with this W. Also, let's make sure to rest, you know, make a call here and there, sprinkle a little spice in there, and then we get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? This is W. Yeah. This is easy. A little Jerry favoritism w. going on. R- right. Yeah. Right. You know, and Jerry, that's the game plan we should have every week, and that's the game plan yeah. we should have as well every week. Button up, baby. Yeah, listen. Let's go. I got to slide off. <laughs> you have yourself Thanks, a Joe. good night, my friend. <laughs> right? You too. You have a good Bye. one. <laughs> listen, man. I'm not going to lie. There was some home cooking. Okay, in Dallas. Y'all saw it. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not saying nothing. I know, you know, different people watch me from different places, different spaces. I'm not showing no disrespect. I'm just saying, you know, the referees, uh, you know, they were a little, you know, exuberant to throw flags. Y'all be DMing me about that later. In fact, I'll see what's going on. All right. Listen, we're going to close things out, man. This was a this was a great one, man. Really enjoyed talking to y'all about this football team. Like I said, I'm taking the Jets to win an ugly game. It's going to be ugly. I don't think it's going to be pretty at all, especially with the weather. They're going to be running the football, you know, pretty tough, pretty heavy. And uh, like I said, I want to see Will McDonald out there. I don't know who ends up being sat down. If Will McDonald is activated, we'll see how they, you know, manage the roster. They always do things. Again, Wes Weiser being out, excuse me, could open the door for McDonald getting activated. Again, Swicer is dealing with that concussion. Again, with Tony Adams being out as well, dealing with a hamstring injury. So, man, a lot of things moving and shaking here with the New York Jets. Now it's time to close out the show. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me send you to promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search the Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with you folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on the Long Beach Joe Show. All right? Your boy is also on Twitter as well. Go on over to Twitter. Type in at the Long Beach Joe, at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter. My personal page is at YoungJ000. Again, personal is at YoungJ000, all right, on Twitter. But the show's page is at the Long Beach Joe on Twitter. Go ahead and follow me. I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me? No issues. I am the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times. All times. Do y'all notice how we talk about uh, <laughs> we talk about moving offensive linemen out of their positions because they're really bad, but we never talk about moving Vera Tucker out because he's bad. It's always like, hey, we need somebody to move over to right tackle. Vera Tucker is uh, – he's talented enough to do that. Let's get him over there, right? Let's move Makai back to the left tackle. He's good enough to be the starting left tackle. Get Brown out of here. We need to figure some things out. Listen, we could just move Connor McGovern to, to right guard. Let's move Vera Tucker, our right guard, who used to be our left guard. That was phenomenal. Let's move him over to right tackle because he's good enough to play that position. I'm just saying, if you want good players, right, if you want to make sure – uh, that you get some talent on your squad, go to USC. <laughs> That's what the Trojans do. That's what we do, baby. We put talented players on the field, okay, for you to enjoy. Fight on, okay, fight on. Your boys also on YouTube as well, for those of you that do not know. Going over to YouTube, type in Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel on there, all right? When you hit that subscription button and you subscribe, hit that notification bell so when I post content, you'll be in the know. Also, give the video on the streams a thumbs up. Share them across your platform or so, social media platforms, excuse me, with your friends and your family. I always enjoy people that find my show that way as well. All right? So I appreciate you all to do that. And as always, people, when you see me in person, okay, when you see me in person, it is arms out, chest open, Free hugs for everyone. Free hugs for everyone. The hugs will cost you absolutely nothing. They will always remain free no matter what anyone tells you. All right? The hugs are always free. Thank you, folks, for calling in. I want to thank you, folks, for listening to the show. I want to thank you, folks, for being in chat, all the savages. Any way that you interact with your boy, any way that you interact with the show, I want to thank you, and I appreciate all of y'all 
Without you people, I'm absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the times out of your day to be involved with the show. All right? You folks have a good one. Until the next show, peace. Hey!